Learning your chord tones is just half of the battle of learning how to play over chord changes. Firstly, you learn your arpeggios in order, like on this 251, if I just go root, third, fifth, seventh, so. And then the second stage, you try and apply that to a backing track or to a loop. And then we hit that third problem stage where that just sounds like an arpeggio exercise. It sounds like broken chunks of chords rather than chord changes. Whereas if I play rhythm guitar, everything kind of flows into each other when the chords work like that. Whereas that single note arpeggio line just sounded like separate things. And if you're at this stage where you've, you know, you're fairly secure on your chord tones, but you, you don't feel you can say anything with it, then today's lesson is about tweaking that and helping you weave things together to make it more musical. If I put all those chord tones in a line across the screen, that's kind of how we're sort of thinking of them really when we think about arpeggios. And for me personally, that's a very fixed and rigid perspective that we need to try and sort of shift away from. I think like anything, we learn it in a, in a linear fashion and then we need to be able to access it at different points. And that can be the difficult thing, I think, from a memory perspective and just sort of um, physically finding it on the fretboard or even just hearing it because it's so much easier to hear that than it is to say here. My first suggestion with chord tone practice, instead of practicing two, five, one, just focus on the first change, two to five and then you can focus on five to one after. So focus on playing D minor seven into G seven, and then focus on playing G seven into C major seven. This should help you build confidence with just that one chord change. And also, you know, if you're trying to play to a backing track and then even just three chords when you're trying to work with this kind of thing can be overwhelming. If we took the idea of playing D minor seven into G seven, the very, very basic thing we need to be able to do first off is D, F, A, C, G, B, D, F. So D, F, A, C, G, B, D, F. And the problem with that line, it makes a big jump. You know, we go D, F, A, C, then we jump back to a G, and it also just sounds like two arpeggios following one another. So we're gonna focus on playing D minor seven into G seven, and then G seven into C major seven. So the chords we're working with include a root, a third, a fifth, and a seventh. There's some really typical resolutions, point of change note moves that you need to be aware of, need to be able to hear, to use for these points of chord changes. I'm going to show you four resolutions that are really typical and common that you really want to know, be aware of, be able to hear and be able to find with your chord tones. And they are flat seven to three, the nine to five, the flat three to root, and then the fifth to the third or the root. To grasp this, just be super clear on what those chord tones are. So D minor seven, D is the root, F is the minor third, A is our fifth, C is our seventh, a G seven, G is the root, B is the major third, D is the fifth, F is the flat seven, C major 7, C is the root, E is the major 3rd, G is our 5th, B is our major 7th. So resolution number 1, flat 7 into 3. So if we're playing D minor 7 into G7, if you get to the 7th of D minor 7, the C, then the 3rd of the G7 sits a semitone beneath. See, D, F, A, C, B. Boom, da, do, da, do. Features in uh, Thelonious Monk's melody on Round About Midnight, actually. You might recognise it if you know that tune. But yes, we're still playing our D minor 7 in order. Yes, we, we're going to do a bit more with that later on. But how much better does that sound going to the 3 than going back to a G? So going... That sounds like a bigger move and it doesn't sound as smooth. So we're going root 3rd, 5th, 7th, major 3rd. So the flat 7 resolves down to the 3rd of the next chord then I can play some G7 stuff, but I'm not going to worry about that because as soon as I'm playing G7, I need to be thinking about playing into C major 7 or hearing an idea to play into that. So we're just worrying about that. Do, da, do, da, do. So that will work nicely. Get that down in different places. You can do that obviously in many ways. Such as this, let's go. A, F, D, C, flat seven, down to B, the third of the G chord. So A, F, D, C, B. Du, 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 du. Okay, again, it's better than. So a key takeaway here is that the flat seven of a two chord, so a D minor seven in this instance, is a semitone above the third of the five chord of G7. That's C going down to a B. It's a super common thing. Once you understand this, you'll start to hear it in people's improv. So practice that. Practice playing that into G7. You know. You can do it free time. 
good to be able to play the chords like I was doing in Sing the Line as well, that's a good test. If you want to apply this to the next chord change in the 2-5-1, so G7 to C major 7, works in exactly the same way. So look, here we go, G, B, D, F, E, so that's root 3rd, 5th, flat 7, down to the 3rd of C, which is an E. So, that's going to work really well too. And my second example of that, G7 in C major 7 is exactly the same intervals, but I'm going to get the G an octave higher. Root, drop for the third, third, fifth, flat seven, land on the third of C. So either, or, again, you could find that in different places, you could play it many different ways but that resolution is, is key to learn. If I did want to try and put that together, I could do the flat seven at both points of change. Now, I'm not using different rhythms here. I'm not articulating anything particularly, so it's it's still going to sound very like I'm practicing chord tones, but uh, I just want to keep it simple for you guys. So um, check this out. So we went D, F, A, C, down to the third of G. Last note on the bar on the G7 is the flat 7, so F, land on the 3rd of C. And then you can go into some sort of C major idea to, to sort of tie it off. At this point I could be using my looper, but if I'm using my chord tones well, you should still hear those chord changes. And here's another example for you. That's nice, and that's doing the same flat 7 to three resolution at the point of the bar change. And the second resolution I want to look at is the ninth of the chord you're on being above the fifth of the next chord in a two, five, one. So if we take D minor into G7 again, what's the ninth of a D minor? Well, it's an E, also sometimes called a major second as well. So there it is against the chord. Da, da. It's a lovely sounding note to, to go for. So I'm going to put that at the point of chord change because an E is a tone above a D, and D is the fifth of G. So that's going to be the change this time, the equivalent of the flat seven to three that we just did. So take this very simple line. So that's A, C, D, E, there's the ninth, down to the fifth of the G. Intervallically that's going A, the fifth, C, the seventh, D, the root, E, the ninth, down to a D, which is the fifth of the G7. Another example, this one. So that's going C, A, F, E, D. Seven, five, minor third, ninth, down to the fifth. And let's apply that to G7 into C major seven. So thinking about that, so what's the ninth of a G chord? Again, it's a, it's a tone above the root, so it's an A. Uh, so we're going to go, we finish on an A on the G7, it's a tone above a G, which is the 5th of C. So here's a way we could play that into that with the ninth of the G7 falling into the 5th of the C chord, which would be, so it's going B, D, F, A, G. So that's 3rd, 5, flat 7, 9, land on the 5th of C. Do, da, do, da, da. Da, do, da, da. Again, quite a common one that people use a lot. I've not notated this, but you can also make it a flat nine. So make it A flat at fret four instead of A at fret five. So that probably has a slightly uh, more kind of jazzy tone to it. Da, do, da, da. Like that that sound. Anything we can do up, we can do down. Do, da, do, da, do. G, F, D, B, A, that's the ninth, landing on the fifth of C. Combine it into a line, we can go over the D minor. Combine ideas one and two, let's do flat seven to three on the D minor seven to the G seven, and let's do nine to five on the uh, G seven to C uh, major seven. And that would sound like this. Make that last resolution a flat nine instead of a nine, and we could have. It works too. And again, rhythm could be much more interesting. I just want things to be really simple for you guys to play and apply to begin with. So we've had flat seven to three, we've had nine to five. The third one we're going to look at is the three to the root. 
So if we go D minor 7 into G7, if I finish on an F, which is the third of D minor, then G is a tone above. So the root of the next chord is a, is a tone above in that instance. So we could go like that. A, C, D, F, that's the third. G, landing on our root for the, 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 uh, the G7. Then I go off into a G7 idea, trying to play into C. All the time, we're really, you know, when we're trying to solo, we're kind of ahead of where the chords are, if you like. We're a bar ahead mentally. Here's an idea which does three to one on D minor seven into G7, and it does flat seven to three on the G7 into the C. Here it is on the screen. And the fourth one I want to look at is five to one. So if we finish on the fifth of a D minor chord, so an A, there it is on the top. G, the root of the next chord, is there, a tone beneath. So we could go as a way to move between those two chords. Here's an example where D minor seven to G seven, I'm playing that five to one. And on the G seven into the C, I'm playing flat seven to three. And one thing to get your head around with chord tones, right? You can either do one of three things, and I've made videos about this before, and it's this idea you can stick on the note you're on if it's a shared note or a note which sounds good against the next chord. You can go down like we just did, we did five down to the one of the next chord, or there's always the option to go up. So if we finish on the fifth of a D minor, that A there, we could go down to G like we did, five to one, or B, the major third of a G7, is there a tone above, so we could go, we've got that option of going up there if we want our line to do that. And here's an example that does that on the D minor 7 to G7, and you should recognize now the flat 7 to 3 on the G7 to C. One of the interesting things about when I'm planning videos for you guys is I don't know what level you're at. I don't know what you know, I don't know what you don't know. So pitching videos is obviously difficult. And you all know, I, I know, I've experienced it many times myself, you click on a video sometimes and it will be just like, whoa, I'm not ready for this. But one thing you you might think is, oh, I like the sound of that. I like what they're doing there. And that's where you have to make smart decisions about what you practice and being honest about maybe some things we've got a superficial understanding of. Um, because for me, like I said at the start, the thorough knowledge of chord tones is probably the most important thing here first before you try this. So like I said, if you can't speak and say D minor seven over the, the fretboard and, and easily and know the notes and the sound of them, then that's where you need to be right now. Um, this other stuff can come later if uh, if you haven't quite yet got that down. And a key takeaway, with a song, a chord progression like the 2-5-1, whatever it might be you're trying to work with, with chord tones, just focus on one chord change and getting really confident as to how you play D minor seven into G7. Because if you can play D minor seven into G7, then you should be able to play E minor seven into A7, G minor seven into C7, and that's the other two fives in other keys. But taking away that third chord, just gives you a chance to really get comfortable and it just takes away the complication of that and you can really think about creating lines just in that instance. My next video is going to build on the topic of today's lesson but I'll put a couple of videos up that could help you with some of the topics surrounding chord tones if you're still needing further work in that area. Don't forget to join me every Wednesday and Saturday for jazz guitar lessons. If you've got any questions you leave me a comment below. Uh, PDF resources from today all available on my website. Uh, there's a link also to my buy me a coffee if you want to say thanks for today's lesson or any other lessons. So uh, hope the practice goes well. Any questions leave them below and I'll see you next time.